The American Civil War was an incredibly bloody conflict that first saw the use of modern tactics. It started in 1861 and ended in 1865. It saw the death of approximately 620,000 men, but today we're going to look at the army structure and ranks of the North, also known as the Union. Like usual though, I'm going to start at the highest rank and slowly move down to the lowest. Now without further ado, let's get into it. First off, we have the rank of Lieutenant General, which was not the highest rank in the army originally until halfway through the war. The rank originally remained unused from the end of the Revolutionary War until the Civil War. It was going to be used in the Mexican-American War, but ultimately Congress never authorised the use of this rank. The insignia for this rank is three stars, but on March 13th, 1861, General Order No. 6 said that the position of Major General commanding the army was entitled to wear three stars. In 1864, Ulysses S. Grant was appointed Lieutenant General and took command of the Union forces. He used the three-star insignia, formally assigned to the position of Major General commanding at the Army. Next, we have the Major General rank, which originally was the highest rank in the Union Army until the American Civil War. Apart from Winfield Scott, who had been promoted to Lieutenant General in 1855, this was because the original rank of George Washington was Lieutenant General and it was considered improper for an officer to hold a rank equal or superior to Washington's. This rank was normally in command of an army of one to eight corps, a corps which had about three divisions, or they commanded a division of around 12,000 men. The Major General's rank insignia was two stars or three depending on what time of the war. The rank of Brigadier General was often in command of a brigade of 4,000 men although I'm sure you already guessed that by the name of this rank. The Brigadier General's rank insignia was one star. Famous generals to hold this rank of the United States included William T. Sherman, Joseph Hooker, and Joseph P. Taylor. The rank of Colonel was a widespread and very common rank amongst the officers of the Union Army. The Civil War saw a massive influx of colonels who commanded a regiment. Since most regiments were state formations and were quickly raised, the colonels in command of these regiments were known by the title Colonel of Volunteers in contrast to the regular army colonels who held a permanent commission. When the Civil War broke out, the rank of Lieutenant Colonel became a more common and was used as a stepping stone for officers who commanded small regiments or battalions and were expected by default to be promoted to full colonel once the manpower of the regiment grew in strength. Such as was the case of Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain who commanded the main regiment as both a lieutenant colonel and later as a colonel. During the American Civil War, the rank of major could often be an XO of a regiment under a colonel. The rank of captain was often used as the rank that commanded a company, which had approximately 100 men in it. The rank of first lieutenant, well there's not much to say about this, it served underneath the captain, it was the second lowest officer rank. The rank of second lieutenant, while it was the lowest officer rank, and side fact, a brevet second lieutenant could sometimes be referred to as a third lieutenant. If you're unsure what a brevet promotion is, a brevet promotion in most militaries is a promotion to a higher rank without the increased pay or full privileges. It is often given as an honour. It was a term borrowed from the British during the American Revolutionary War and was used in the Continental Army. Now the NCO and enlisted ranks change in the Union Army depending on the branch of service you serve in. For this I'll be covering the infantry, cavalry, artillery and sharpshooters, otherwise we'd be here all day. Now let us start with the infantry ranks. By the way, the rank insignias are often the same, but with different colours depending on the branch. Infantry is blue, artillery is red, cavalry is yellow, and sharpshooters are yellow on green clothing. The Sergeant Major was a rank used in both the Union and Confederate Army during the American Civil War. At that time it was the highest enlisted rank, being just above the Quartermaster Sergeant. The Quartermaster Sergeant was used in both the Union and Confederate Armies. It was below Sergeant Major and above Ordnance Sergeant. The same rank insignia was used by both armies. Both armies varied colour of stripes, assigning red for artillery, yellow for cavalry and blue for infantry. Additionally, on the 4th of May 1861, each company of Union Cavalry was authorised to have a company Quartermaster Sergeant. The Quartermaster Sergeant job was responsibility was to look after the company wagon and all the property it contained. He was also responsible for acquiring fuel, forage for horses, and straw for bedding for the company. Next to the first sergeant, but there isn't much to actually say about this rank, it was just superior to a normal sergeant. 
The sergeant rank is between corporal and first sergeant. During the history of the US Army, the number of sergeants in a company fluctuated between three and five, but by 1861, the number was steadied at four per company. Lastly, we have the ranks of corporal, which is the lowest NCO rank within the army. And then at last, we have private, which is often actually behind the title of musician, but musician isn't an official rank, and more or less just a position. To save time with the cavalry ranks, I'm just going to go through the added or edited ranks for the cavalry structure. The cavalry regimental quartermaster sergeant was responsible for all of the equipment, gears, horses and various other things that were important and were attached to the regiment. This rank replaces the normal quartermaster sergeant. Next we have the cavalry company quartermaster sergeant, which is the same as the regimental quartermaster sergeant but his duties were limited to just looking after a company. Now, now we have the farrier or blacksmith. This rank's job was to look after the cavalry horses and make sure they were always fit for service. This rank is between sergeant and corporal. Like the cavalry rank structure, I'm going to do the same with the artillery and only mention the edited, added or removed ranks. The rank of battery quartermaster sergeant was basically the same as the company but limited to an artillery battery. They began to stop the same unofficial chevrons as cavalry from May 1863. This rank was between first sergeant and sergeant. Lastly for artillery we have the pioneer which is between corporal and private. To help explain this I'm going to use this quote. Pioneers in wartime are such as are commanded in from the country to march with an army for mending the ways, for working on entrenchments, fortifications and for making mines and approaches. The soldiers are likewise employed in all of these things. Most of the other foreign regiments of artillery have a company of pioneers well instructed in that important branch of duty. Our regiments of half and trade cavalry have three or four pioneers each provided with aprons, hatchets, saws, spades and pickaxes. Lastly we have the sharpshooter rank structure which is pretty much the same as the infantry, with the ranks being Sergeant Major, Quartermaster Sergeant, First Sergeant, Sergeant, Corporal, then Private. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know if I got anything wrong, or if you want another video of the American Civil War. I enjoyed making it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it. And thanks, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.